up, mamas? Thank you so much for being here with us. We have here Kara Murray. She's the founder of the website and podcast Today I Am Enough. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today, that you are enough. Kara, thank you so much for being here with us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. When you see other moms who are overwhelmed as well, how, do you have any advice to help, whether it be a, a sister or a friend or anybody that you see is extremely overwhelmed as a mom? Um, I think the biggest thing is we all want to be recognized, like human beings want to be recognized, right? Like not necessarily as in like, look at me, I'm so amazing, but we just want to be noticed and we want to be loved and kids aren't awesome at that. <laughs> They are sometimes, but not consistently. They're just not awesome at that. And so I think when someone comes to your mind or when you see someone else struggling, just even something as simple as sending a text message and just being like, Hey, I just wanted to let you know that I'm thinking about you today. And I think you're awesome. And thanks for being a great friend or a great sister or neighbor or whatever, or whoever it is. I think just following through when you think, when you're thinking of someone, just following through with that as reach out to them because you never, ever know who might need to pick me up. And it could be that woman that is the epitome of perfectionism. I had an experience recently where I did that. I reached out to someone, excuse me, and just texted them and just said that, like, I just wanted to let you know that I was thinking about you today. And I hope that you have a great day. And I just want to let you know that you're loved. And she wrote me back and she was like, you are an angel today. And it was never someone that I would have anticipated necessarily needing someone to reach out to her. And so everyone needs it. Every single person, the person that you think is doing an incredible job and has the perfect life and the perfect house and everything, she still needs someone to notice and love her. And I think we just can't be scared. And if it's someone you don't really know, I think that's okay too. Like just saying, I was just thinking about you and I wanted you to know, I hope you have a good day. Mm. It doesn't have to be awkward. It can be totally genuine. Even if you don't know someone, I think it's only awkward if we, if we let it be. So yeah. And I think scheduling time away with someone, if you notice they're overwhelmed, just be like, Hey, do you want to go do lunch? I know that's really tricky because we've got kids. So what's a day that could work and trying to get a moment away from the kids together can always be fun or just like a play date at the park. Uh, Like I live in Utah and that's not possible right now. It has been up until like today. um, I'm me too. I'm here with you. Yeah. It's been like 50 (laughs) degrees, which is not normal Mm -hmm. here, but, um, but just scheduling. Like I loved that when I had little kids, just going to the park with my friend always bring snacks. If you're going to the park, if you don't know that yet, always your kids get to the park and they're suddenly starving. Like you've never fed them. So, um, <laughs> but just, we would do like a picnic lunch often at the park with friends. And then that gives me a chance to chat with my friend and my kids, a chance to get their energy out and play with other kids. And so I think just, just reaching out and, um, seeing what will work for them, whether it's a park or going to lunch or just going for a walk around the neighborhood. I've done that with people over my neighborhood before, and that's really helpful. So I think just reaching out in general, we all want to know that we're loved and cared for and noticed. Absolutely. I I think that's very true. I love that so much. The title of your podcast is you are enough. How did you get started in doing your podcast and what was your inspiration behind that? (laughs) Um, so I actually started my podcast in 2017 and I took about a year and a half off of my podcast and I've just relaunched it. So that's been fun to start doing again. Um, so the name today I'm enough just came, I was laying in bed one evening and talking with my husband. I was like, I, and I was like, just feeling all the things like, I'm not a good enough mom. I'm not a good enough wife. I'm not a good enough neighbor. I'm not a good enough, whatever, everything, you know, like I'm just not enough. And it occurred to me that I wasn't the only one that felt that way. Like I just knew, I knew I wasn't alone. And I just felt really um, moved to do something about it and to get that message out to women because we all feel that way. We all feel like we fall short in so many areas of our lives because we want it to look perfect. We want it to be this beautiful life that is just amazing always. And it's not like life is so messy and when I was, what I did yesterday was enough for yesterday. And what I can accomplish today is going to be totally different than yesterday, but it's enough today also. 
And I think I've learned that over when I took my break from my podcast, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. And that was a journey. Like (laughs) I've had to totally reevaluate how I'm eating so that I don't have flare ups, but I was like on the like so exhausted. I couldn't even keep my eyes open and just so many other round things. Like I just didn't feel well. And so what I could accomplish in a day then looks totally different than what I can accomplish now, which still looks completely different than what I could accomplish before I had my Hashimoto's. And so I think we just, again, it goes back to self-love, like just be okay with what you can get done today. If all you get done is comforting your crying babies all day, that's okay. That is enough. But if you get the dishes and the laundry and, you know, the floor mopped and then the spill picked up after the mop, cause that's going to always happen. And, um, and you know, like you go run all the grocery errands and you do all the things that's okay. Like today doesn't have to look like tomorrow and today doesn't have to look like yesterday. And we can just be accepting of our abilities in those days. Mm, so good. That's incredible. Wow. You, you've been through quite the journey, my friend <laughs> <laughs> and, and sticking on the, the theme of not being perfect and being enough. Do you have any personal stories you can share of a time you were a less than perfect mother, but everything <laughs> turned out. Okay. Oh, I think generally speaking all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I think I said, I've got six kids. They're seven years apart. My, like they're seven years and one month, my oldest and youngest. And, you know, just realizing with one of my kids, I, I think it was my fourth. I realized I just needed to lower my expectations when I had him. I just needed to completely basically make it. So like at the end of the day, if my kids were alive and fed, we were great. And anything else <laughs> was completely a bonus. And it really changed my outlook on being a mom (laughs) because I could just be like, great. Like, this is all we got done today. I didn't do the dishes. I didn't do the laundry, but we got dressed. So that's an extra. So hooray (laughs) for us. (laughs) I think just, just really, um, lowering your expectations on what you have to do and really it's focusing on what has to get done, especially Mm. if you have little kids, little kids take a lot out of you. And, um, which worked out well, my fourth son actually ended up having to like, he had, and he ended up having a stroke when he was 10 days old and which was like a crazy experience. So it turned out well that I like had such low expectations (laughs) for everything because that could just continue. But I also learned it when I had my fifth and my sixth, just really, my expectations were really low. It was like, get people to school. So get those kids dressed. It doesn't matter if anyone else gets dressed for the day, but you know, just get people to school, just, just do what you can and be okay with it. And I think that's really the thing that I learned the most from having like my really, really little kids and just letting go of that perfectionism in the same breath as lowering your expectations, just do what you can do. And be happy about it. Like find joy in those moments, even though it's really hard. It's really hard (laughs) when they're really little. I just had a lot of little kids. And sometimes I don't even remember what happened when I'm like, I don't remember when you were all two, like there were too many two year olds in a row. I don't know. (laughs) Your mind was numb. No, it is. It's Um, true. It's so difficult. Yes. If I, if I get my two year old son a bath, I'm like, it's been a good yeah, day. Yeah, even it's yourself. Like, if yes, you if I bathe. shower. <laughs> yes, yes. And here's my dolls. One of one of the kids' teachers bringing by some homework. <laughs> oh, there you. Oh, I'm sure they love that. I yeah, love well, she homework. does because she's my one that's like, I am so bored. And it's like a teacher that does like harder. Like she leaves her classroom to go do like harder math. So she oh, really is man. excited about it. I oh, know. good. She's like, I'm, I'm so bored. I... School's so boring. And I'm like, sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Like. <laughs> Not, It'll be I'm better sure when you okay. are in elementary school. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Gosh, you must be really smart. All right, Kara, what would be your, your number one takeaway for moms? If they were to remember one thing, what would it be? Love yourself and forgive yourself for sure. Like just learning to be gentle with yourself and with your life and your situation, whatever your situation looks like, learning to love your situation even with the messy and the unbeautiful and the hard things and 
accepting your faults as a woman and as a mother and as a spouse and those hard moments when you are struggling to forgive yourself, just taking a moment to look at yourself in the eyes and realize how wonderful you are and how much you would just love someone else in your situation. You're not going to criticize your best friend because she lost her temper with her kids, right? You're just going to be like, it's okay. Like just try again tomorrow. And so I think learning to love and forgive yourself is just essential. It's going to just open your whole heart and your whole mind and all your emotions for your kids and for other people too. So you can love and accept them more fully. Kara, I love that message and everything you've said today. Thank you so much for being here with me and taking the time. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It's been great. Yeah. Thank you.